good afternoon friends welcome to cs academy today we will start strength of materials first of all what is meant by strength of materials that means we have to study the material strength why we have to study the material strength that means that materials you are using in different different applications that means whenever you are using in different different applications we are applying load on a material that means load you are applied on a body that is that material will undergo some stress and automatically that material will undergo some strain that means that material is undergo stresses and that material undergo some strains now what is meant by stress stress equal to resisting load by cross sectional area that means what is meant by resistance load and what is meant by cross sectional area suppose example you take a material like this one rod like this this rod you are applying load on a material this load applied on a material suppose if you cut a section like this whenever you cut a section like this it is the applied load and this is the resisting load that means that applied load is equal to resistance load that means applied load and resistance load both are in equal and opposite nature that means directly you cannot find out the resistance load from this applied load is equal to resistance load suppose if you are considering applied load is 10 kilo newtons that resistance load is also 10 kilo newtons that means in this manner you can find out the resistance load and next how you can find out the cross sectional area that means if you consider a this circular rod section or this bar it is having a diameter d and you consider a cross section first of all what is meant by cross section is cross section means you cut at any point the section remains same here from this diagram this is a circular bar and this cross section is a circle that area is cross sectional circular area is pi by 4 d square where d is the diameter of the circle from this you can find out the cross sectional area and finally stress is equal to resistance load by unit cross sectional area that means resistance load is equal to p and cross sectional area is equal to pi by 4 d square that mean 4 p by pi d square see here this is not a formula for stress but simply how you can consider the resistance load and how you can consider the cross sectional area from this this is equal to stress is equal to resistance load by cross sectional area that people they are thinking that load is different force is different and all these are same only all these are same only that stress is equal to load by area load means it is a force and load load means it is resistance load by unit cross sectional area that means load equal to units for units is newtons and area is meter square that means finally stress units is newton per meter square and this stresses they are classified based upon the load direction that is based upon the load directions the stresses are two types based upon the stresses that load acting one is in perpendicular to the body another one is parallel to the body that means suppose if the load acting perpendicular to the body that is known as perpendicular to the body or perpendicular to the area that is known as normal load if the load acting perpendicular to the body parallel to the area or parallel to the body that is known as shear load that means shear the stresses it is one is normal load another one is shear load that normal load per area is known as normal stress shear load 
per unit area is known as shear stress that most of the people they are studying different different stresses that is one is bending stress buckling stress crushing stress crushing different different stresses but all these causes these two loads only all these causes these two stresses only that means in the entire instant of materials each and every bending stress buckling stress crushing stress bearing stress all these stresses causes only these two stresses only that is the people misconception they are studying at different different point and different different stresses you will come across this these stresses region because of these two stresses only and now you come to the normal stress normal stress it is a two two ways one is a tensile stress another one is a compressive stress that means suppose if you take a one bar like this if you apply the loads if you apply the load away from the body it is known as tensile load if you apply the load towards the body it is known as compressive loads that compressive compressive load per unit area is known as compressive load per unit area is known as compressive stress tensile load per unit area is known as tensile stress suppose if you observe this when you applying a ten compressive load on your body that body reduces its length increases its breadth that is the happens in compressive stress in tensile stress if you apply the load on your tensile load on your body that body will elongate the length increases breadth decreases this is relating about the normal stresses and shear stresses this is the shear stresses shear stresses it is acting parallel to the body parallel to the body means that is load acting parallel to the area that means it is known as shear load that shear load per unit area is known as shear stress that shear stress they are classified in two ways one is normal shear normal shear stress another one is torsional shear stress both normal shear stress and torsional shear stress units will be the load per unit area load per unit area means it is newton per meter square newton load unit is newton and area unit is meter square if you consider this final this is the load applied on these two opposite in nature these two are at a parallel to the surface this parallel to the surface it will create a shear the body or otherwise it will change as the shape of your body these two loads it creates separates into two parts this shear creates it separates into two parts first one is direct shear stress and torsional shear stress in direct shear stress you are observing in you are observing in shear force and bending moment diagrams you are see, you are observing this shear force diagram and torsional shear stress you are observing in twisting moment that means in shafts whenever it is a beam it is a circular beam at that in case you are applying a twisting moment for understanding that normal stress and shear stress the best example you consider this suppose if it is a one plate like this another plate is like this these two are attached by a rivet and see here this is the plate axis this is the first plate and second plate this is the plate axis and this is the rivet and this is the rivet axis the rivet axis suppose if you are applying tensile load on your body these two members the plate these two plate members they are resisting tensile load they are resisting tensile that means that load it is passes through the axis and see here this this is a normal load and coming to here this plate failure is tensile failure that means the plate it will undergo failure it will tensile failure and it is also called as normal failure 
and the coming to the rivet the rivet it will create whenever you are applying load on a member applying load on a member the rivet is cut into two parts the rivet is cut into two parts that means the rivet it will cut into two parts that means that rivet failure is a shear failure that means the plate failure is a normal failure and the rivet failure is a shear failure